So the anti-homosexuality bill that we were hearing about a few years ago is back in front of the parliament of Uganda. The one that made international news um, first in 2009 and then 10 and 11. What happened was a um, member of parliament in Uganda introduced the bill in 2009. It gained momentum. It got like not, you know, it, enormous popular support among the population, among the people of Uganda, and, and a huge amount of support um, from the members of parliament, like over 90%. So the bill passed, parliament sent it to the desk of, of President um, Museveni, and he had said that he would sign it. He would definitely sign the bill. He'd, he'd come out in favor of it. But what happened was uh, the long arm of the homosexual establishment in the Western countries reached their uh, neo-colonial arm into East Africa, into Uganda, because they were all worried about it. They call it the Kill the Gays Bill, because there's a provision in this bill, in addition to the other provisions strengthening the already existing laws in Uganda against homosexuality, there's a provision for the death penalty. And that provision for the death penalty is specifically for aggravated cases of homosexuality, aggravated sodomy. We're talking about a person, or maybe I should say an animal. We're talking about a human being who knows he's been diagnosed with HIV. This is, this is the circumstance in which they are talking about the death penalty in Uganda, in this bill. Let's say I'm a sodomite who has been diagnosed HIV positive. And for whatever reason, one of the reasons would be because some of the witch doctors, some of these lying spirits in uh, parts of East Africa and in Uganda have convinced some people who, who already are crazy enough to engage in practices like homosexuality, they've convinced them, these sodomites, that they can get rid of HIV. It's a popular idea there. Oh, you can get rid of the HIV problem just by raping a virgin. That's right. So you know you've got HIV, and the way they say you can get rid of it is by raping a virgin. So it could be a virgin boy sodomizing him, abusing his rear end in order to supposedly, because a devil, a lying spirit through whoever told, or a medium or whoever, has told you that you can get rid of your AIDS or your HIV um, status by raping a virgin. That's right. Raping a virgin. So they're trying to control this. They also have an epidemic. I was in Kampala a year ago, and there was an, and I was speaking in the schools. There is an epidemic there of moneyed, and it's also happening in Kenya, of moneyed uh, Westerners coming to East Africa with tourist groups, with a lot of money, to these poor people, these poor students who need to pay their school fees, for instance, and offering to say, um, I'll pay your school fees. All you have to do is let me sodomize you, come into my homosexual community. In other words, they're looking for black meat. They're looking for new victims for their demonic, wicked lifestyle. That's what they want. And they're using money. This is nothing but neocolonialism. So the people of these countries, there's no wonder why the, the member of parliament and the parliament of Uganda and the president at first was trying to, to, to strengthen the laws against sodomy because the fact is that their people have been targeted by Satan. And by the Western countries which are being controlled by Satan. We're talking about the deaths of people. We're talking about innocent people. And the bill talks about mentally retarded people and statutory rape. In other words, if you rape somebody and you know you have HIV and you give them HIV and you sodomize them, commit homosexuality, whatever you want to call it, you, you, you abuse their body trying to get rid of your HIV or whatever your stupid, demonic, evil motivation is, regardless of it, they're saying, we might hang you. We might hang you. So, Pastor Martin Sempa, very influential pastor and well-known pastor who's lost a sibling to AIDS uh, in his youth, was a very uh, talented dancer and has been well known around the world as an uh, activist against um, 
uh, on behalf of people who are suffering from AIDS and who have HIV and against homosexuality. So he, this guy is well known all over the world. Pastor Simpa was friends with our own Rick Warren here in America. That's right. Rick Warren, who hosted the uh, 2008 presidential debates, the Rick Warren of Saddleback, I believe it's called Saddleback Church, the, Rick, the pasty-faced, smarmy Rick Warren, who tries to weasel around and, and ride the fence and be on every side of every issue. That Rick Warren. That's right. That's who I'm talking about. So, he was friends with Martin Simpa. Martin Simpa bought his books. He came and visited Martin Simpa and visited Uganda and talked against homosexuality. But when this bill came out and it became clear that someone who was connected with Rick Warren... <laughs> was supporting it and the homosexuals were shrieking and freaking out they want to kill us all why do you all identify with rapists with people who rape underage people hey gay so-called gay community in america do you all identify that closely with hiv positive people who want to rape mentally retarded people and commit statutory rape how closely do you really identify with them? Now you're showing your true colors, you see, the true colors. But you see, what happened was when it came out in the media, which is controlled by Satan and controlled by the homosexual um, propaganda arm, Rick Warren, who's so popular with his mega church and so accepted by everyone on every side of every issue, became terrified that this connection, people were connecting him to Martin Sempa, who was the pastor in Uganda who was supporting this bill to protect the lives of people in his country, people in his own congregation, in his own city, right? And so then Rick Warren comes out with this video to distance himself from his former friend, Martin Simpa, because Rick Warren is a coward. But the trouble is, brothers and sisters, Rick Warren is worse than a coward. Worse than a coward. Rick Warren is, it, it, now this bill has been stopped. Not because the people of Uganda didn't support it. They did, very clearly. A vast majority of the people of Uganda supported the bill. The parliament passed it. The president said he would sign it. You know why he didn't do it? It's called neo-colonialism. Neo-colonialism. The president of the United States of America, the prime minister of Canada, the leader of the EU, and the UK, and other globalist powers picked up the phone called the president of uganda and said we're going to take away that's right financial aid we're going to take away the money if you pass this law the law designed to save the lives of the people and the children of uganda and rick warren was so afraid of the condemnation of the western powers which have sold themselves, they've sold their rear ends to Satan. Talk about sodomy. Talk about sodomy. Rick Warren actually sold his body to Satan when he came out against his friend. This bill was, was designed to do what every Christian should do and should want to be done for the weak people, mentally retarded people, people who are, who are uh, children, who shouldn't be uh, molested sexually, to protect them. To protect people. That's what this bill was designed to do. Yes, people who uh, uh, murder other people or, or threaten to murder other people or put people at risk of murder uh, by, by infecting them with a deadly disease because they believe the lies of devils. That wicked idea that somehow they can be delivered from HIV positive by, by HIV... Uh, positive status by by raping a virgin do you hear what we're talking about here rick warren has literally by being part of the effort which stymied this bill against the will of the ugandan people the western countries stopped this bill dead in its tracks now it's back up and god knows what they're going to do they're under a great pressure to get rid of it or at least uh, remove the uh, death penalty provisions and they're talking now about changing that to life in prison the point is Rick Warren, this bill should have been passed a long time ago. It's white people who have forgotten God. It's the Western countries that have forgotten God and rejected God and annihilated their Christian culture 
that have overruled the will of the sovereign nation of Uganda. Because these countries, like Uganda, and their dependence on our money, on our economy, on our foreign aid, has put them in shackles. This is slavery. This is slavery. These shackles must be broken. These shackles must be broken. This is more than slavery. It is, it is in fact, prostitution. It's, it's, it's spiritual slavery. When people from far away, and in Rick Warren's case, in the name of Jesus Christ, coming and condemning a bill in a country, it's not even his country, designed by the, by the stewards of that country, the men who are trying to protect the people in that country, the pastors and the ministers of government in that country, to protect the innocent. And pastors like so-called pastors, wolves in sheep's clothing like Rick Warren, come in and pretending to be so nice and kind and forgiving, in fact, condemned to death, children whose lives would have been saved by this bill. The fact is, there will be individuals, they're already dealing with it now, they were trying to get to stamp it out, trying to eliminate it with this bill, or at least restrain it, which is what God's word says in Romans 13, is the job of government to punish evil, to punish evil and reward good. But instead, Rick Warren stepped in, I, I don't, um, he, he totally condemned the bill, because what? Because he fears the homosexual lobby in the USA. But he claims to be a minister of the Lord Jesus Christ, of the God of the Bible. This reminds me of something. In the 6th century, you see, my last name is O'Toole. And the O'Tooles were a family just descended from a high king of Ireland named Toole. And the name means the people are mighty. And when um, St. Patrick brought the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ to the island of Ireland, the Irish people were very wicked people. They were very pagan, but they had never known better. They had never seen the light. So a people who dwelt in darkness, praise God, as Isaiah says, saw a great light. And Patrick was, was very protective of his fold there in Ireland because God, through, through many miracles, and don't have time to go into the story of St. Patrick now, there's a lot of mythology around it, but at the core of it is a really good story. It's not all legend. St. Patrick was a real priest of God, a real pastor, a real missionary, a real apostle to the Irish people, a called servant of God. So fast forward years later, the Irish people have begun to, by and large, to accept the gospel of Jesus Christ to become Christian people. But the Christian bish bishops of the Isle of Britain, Roman Britain, we're talking about Roman Britain before the English ever came, the Christian bishops over Christianized Roman Great Britain had in their church, as a member of their congregation, a warlord by the name of Caroticus. Caroticus was very rich, and he gave a lot of money to the bishops. And here's where I'm tying into Rick Warren. You see, Rick Warren gets a lot of money from a lot of people. And some of that money would, in fact, go away if Rick Warren allowed himself to be seen to be associated with men like Richard Simpa. Like, excuse me, Pastor Mark, I'm confusing him with Richard Simpala, who is friends with uh, Martin Simpa there in Kampala. But Martin Simpa is the man, a man who is actually trying to stand up in the Christian tr tradition and restrain evil. Yes, with force, with the force of government. To say, no, you're not going to infect these young people with HIV. But if Rick Warren allows himself to be associated with those people who do that now, they're go he's going to lose, what, money. Well, see, these bishops were in the similar position. They were going to lose the money, all the money that Karate... You see, Karatikus was a warlord and a merchant. And his ships would go along the coast of Ireland, which had been pagan, and raid and rape and pillage and take slaves and come back with coffers full of silver gold and precious things 
and slaves. And then he'd give whatever, 10, 15%, he'd give his tithe to the church. He'd buy off the bishops. And this was tolerated. The people of Ireland were pagans. Why not? Just like we would, we would do to the Africans for, for hundreds of years. Why not? They don't, they're just pagans. They're, they're committing bestiality, all these things. And, and you know what? Those things were true. The Irish were pagans. The Irish were committing bestiality. They probably did deserve uh, they probably did deserve what, everything that was happening to them. But the fact is that they, accept, they repented and they accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and it, only two, there are only two authentic documents that we have received from St. Patrick, that, um, the Apostle to the Irish, that, uh, that historians consider to be historic writings of St. Patrick. And one of them, one of them is the Confessions of St. Patrick, but the, but the other one is his letter condemning Caroticus. Caroticus is this warlord. Because what Caroticus did was, even after, he was so confident in his cash flow that was going to the bishops of Britain, the British bishops, that even after, even though he was a baptized Christian, supposedly, Caroticus, even after the Irish received the Lord Jesus Christ and quit doing these wicked things and behaving like pagans, you know, Caroticus should have been bringing them the gospel in the first place. He never should have been raping them. He never should have been pillaging them. But especially after they were baptized Christians, like him, fellow believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, and yet he continued to rape and pillage his brothers and sisters in Christ. So go read Patrick's letter to Caroticus. And he took it upon himself, even though he didn't technically have the authority, but in the Lord Jesus Christ, he took it upon himself, the authority to protect his flock and excommunicate Caroticus. Now fast forward to the year 2009 and to the year 2013. Rick Warren, Similar to Caroticus, or similar to the bishops, I should say, the bishops of Britain in the days of Caroticus, fears that his cash flow is going to be threatened. If he allows himself to be seen to be allied with the one who is protecting the children of Uganda from these wicked beasts, these sodomites. So, Rick Warren distances him, himself from his friend, Pastor Martin Sempa, who's a true pastor, deserves the term pastor, protecting his flock like King David from these ravenous beasts trying to devour them. But Rick Warren abandons his friends in Uganda and in fact condemns them by throwing all the weight of his ministry into a condemnation of this bill which is in fact a good bill designed to protect human life. Rick Warren is a new British bishop. Rick Warren is a new Caroticus, if you will. Someone who, for the sake of the mammon of this world, for the sake of not losing the status that he's acquired in a society completely sold to Satan, betrayed his friend, Pastor Martin Simpa, but more importantly, betrayed the children of Uganda, and more importantly than that, Rick Warren, you know what you did? You betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ, the everlasting Father, the King of Kings, and you betrayed his kingdom. Shame on you. Repent. The blood of the innocent children of Uganda, whose lives would have already been saved, if this bill had been enacted to protect them from the people coming from your country, they're part of the problem. It's not just these people believing the lies of the witch doctors that they can be cured of, of HIV. There's people like um, Kenneth Heber of GayToAfrica.com. I know uh, as a visitor to Kenya, my wife is Kenyan, that every year Kenneth Heber brings from New York City safaris of exclusively gay people. Gee, I wonder what they do there in Kenya with their money. Gee, I wonder why, I wonder why they uh, go there. 
Is it just to look at the animals? Is it just to see giraffes? Gee, I wonder. Or are they preying on the school children, the innocent street children? Shame on you, Rick Warren. Shame on you for betraying the blood of your brothers and sisters, betraying the law of God. Shame on you.